rapid sequence intubation outside of the operating theater. This is an instructional video meant as a companion piece to the simplified task analysis produced by Reddy and colleagues. The simplified task analysis can be found by following the reference below. Begin by performing basic hand hygiene. First remove rings and watches. Apply antibacterial soap to a cupped hand. This can also be done with alcohol-based hand rub. Rub hands palm to palm. Rub palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub right palm over left dorsum with fingers interlaced and vice versa. Rub backs of fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotational rubbing with clasped fingers of right hand in left palm and vice versa. Rotational rubbing of left thumb clasped in right palm and vice versa. Rub both wrists. Dry hands with a non-sterile towel. Now undertake steps to prepare the patient for intubation. Use a checklist for preparation. Discuss indication for intubation, alternative approaches, risks, and benefits. Discuss the airway plan, assign team roles, and address team member questions and concerns. Consider moving the patient to a more controlled environment. If the patient is in the ward or the emergency department, consider moving to the intensive care unit for intubation. If a difficult airway is anticipated, consider moving to the operating theater. Ensure the patient has reliable intravenous or intraosseous access. If not, establish a new one. Assess the patient's airway to predict difficulty of intubation. Perform malampati scoring. The Makocha score is the only validated tool for assessing difficulty of intubation outside of the operating theater. It considers factors related to the patient, factors related to pathology, and factors related to the operator. Points are assigned if any of these conditions are present. The score is summated to produce a number between 0 and 12. A number close to 0 predicts easy intubation, and a number close to 12 predicts very difficult intubation. Optimize the patient's position by placing him or her in the sniffing position. This involves flexion of the neck and lifting of the chin. The mastoid process of the skull should be aligned with the sternum. Optimizing position may involve adding or removing pillows. Optimize the patient's medical state to potentially reduce the need for intubation and reduce the risk associated with intubation. This may involve giving nebulizers, giving diuretics to reduce pulmonary edema, correcting volume depletion with fluids, or initiating inotropes for hemodynamic instability. Identify any medication allergies or risk factors for hyperkalemia. Do not give succimethonium if the patient is at significant risk for hyperkalemia. If the patient is in a rigid cervical spine stabilization collar, remove it and have an assistant provide manual inline stabilization. Pre-oxygenate the patient in preparation for intubation. If the patient's clinical state allows, this should be continued for at least three minutes. In this example, pre-oxygenation is accomplished by using the existing BiPAP mask. The fraction of inspired oxygen is simply increased to 100% to accomplish pre-oxygenation. Pre-oxygenation can also be accomplished by applying a tightly fitting face mask attached to a manual breathing circuit supplying 100% inspired oxygen at an appropriate positive end expiratory pressure. High flow nasal oxygen at a flow rate of 30 to 50 liters per minute of 100% oxygen can also be used. The advantage of this technique is that high flow nasal oxygen can be continuously given during intubation attempts giving per-oxygenation as well as pre-oxygenation. 
if available, target end tidal oxygen concentrations greater than 85%. Next, prepare the equipment that you'll need for intubation. Apply appropriate monitoring, including pulse oximetry, electrocardiography, and either non-invasive or invasive blood pressure monitoring. Prepare and check the drugs required for intubation. This includes induction agents, of which ketamine is preferred, emergency drugs such as atropine, ephedrine, phenylephrine, and adrenaline, muscle relaxants such as succimethonium or rocuronium, short-acting potent opioids such as fentanyl, inotropes such as noradrenaline or adrenaline, and maintenance sedation such as propofol or midazolam. Assemble and check airway equipment, including laryngoscope. Ensure the batteries are working on the laryngoscopes. Check video laryngoscope. Check backup means of oxygenation, such as laryngeal mask airways. Making sure to have a second generation laryngeal mask airway available. Assemble and check a variety of types of endotracheal tubes of varying sizes. Ensure the cuff is working on all tubes. The tube on the right allows suction above the cuff and is preferred for intensive care patients. Check oropharyngeal airway, nasopharyngeal airway, stylet, and bougie. If deemed necessary, also obtain and check Aintree intubation catheter and flexible intubating bronchoscope. Obtain and check emergency front of neck access kit. Now prepare the team for intubation. Assemble an intubation team and ensure all available senior staff are present. Allocate team roles, including team leader, first intubator, second intubator, team member to apply cricoid force, intubator's assistant, team member to manage drugs, team member to monitor patient and monitor vital signs, runner, team member to provide manual inline stabilization if indicated, team member to perform front of neck access if it should be required, and team member to note the time. Discuss who will be called for help in the event of an emergency. Prepare for any difficulty by verbalizing the plan and backup plans. Verbalize airway plan is. Plan A should consist of the drugs chosen plus attempted intubation via laryngoscopy. Plan B and C should include emergency ventilation via supraglottic airway, face mask ventilation, and fiber optic intubation via supraglottic airway. Plan D should be front and neck access. Discuss whether the patient can be woken in the event of an emergency. This is usually not the case in intensive care intubations. Address any team member questions or concerns. Ensure the Yankower suction is turned on, connected, and placed underneath the pillow. Ensure a bougie is available and placed underneath the pillow. When all preparation steps are complete, perform attempts at intubation. Note that during the filming of this demonstration, wall oxygen was not available, so ventilation bags will not inflate as in a real-life scenario. Once pre-oxygenation has been performed, induce anesthesia intravenously. Here we are using fentanyl, ketamine, and rocuronium. Optionally apply cricoid force. If performing a modified rapid sequence intubation, cricoid force may be omitted. Wait one minute for rocuronium to take effect. If using succimethonium, wait for fasciculations. At this point, optionally bag mask ventilate the patient if respiratory function is poor. The decreased risk of hypoxia must be balanced against the increased risk of aspiration for each individual patient when bag mask ventilation is performed.
once the patient is paralyzed to perform first attempt at intubation. Here a direct laryngoscope is used, but a video laryngoscope may be electively chosen for first attempt. Open the mouth, extend the neck, insert the laryngoscope into the oral cavity with the left hand, track the tip of the laryngoscope along the base of the tongue into the molecula, sweep the tongue to the left, lift the laryngoscope to reveal the vocal cords, and attempt to insert the endotracheal tube. If difficulty is encountered, a variety of maneuvers to improve ease of intubation can be attempted. Here we have attempted optimal external laryngeal manipulation and have attempted to improve the patient's position. If difficulty is still encountered, abandon the intubation attempt and provide face mask ventilation. At this stage, it is appropriate to summon senior help and ensure the front of neck access kit is available. Consider performing more maneuvers to improve your chance at the next intubation attempt, such as releasing cricoid force or further improving positioning. At this point, face mask ventilation is proving difficult, so an oropharyngeal airway is inserted. The second intubation attempt is now performed using a bougie as an adjunct. Difficulties encountered inserting the bougie, so this intubation attempt is abandoned. Face mask ventilation continues to be challenging, so a two-hand technique is used. A nasopharyngeal airway may also be inserted to improve face mask ventilation. At this point, since intubation and face mask ventilation are proving difficult, ensure the front of neck access kit is open. Rescue oxygenation may also be attempted with a second generation laryngeal mask airway. Ventilation is still inadequate, so a third intubation attempt is performed, this time using a video laryngoscope. This is my last allowable attempt at intubation. If a senior colleague should arrive, they may attempt intubation one more time. At this point, all attempts at intubation have failed and rescue oxygenation has also failed. This is a can't intubate, can't oxygenate scenario. Consider waking the patient if possible, but if this is not possible, we are now forced to perform front and neck access. Here is the algorithm for intubation outside of the operating theatre, recently published by Higgs and colleagues in the British Journal of Anesthesia. This is also the algorithm adopted by the Difficult Airway Society of the UK. The failed intubation scenario just shown to you closely follows this algorithm. It also emphasizes early communication in failed intubation scenarios and escalation to front of neck access where appropriate. Note that this algorithm emphasizes the use of high flow nasal oxygen, video laryngoscopes, and second generation supraglottic airways. This is the Vortex model produced by Crimes in 2016. It is a conceptual model meant to illustrate the non-linear approach to failed airway management. Around the vortex model are images of the three means of oxygenation, face mask, laryngeal mask airway, and intubation. A failed best attempt at any of these means of oxygenation prompts inward movement towards the center of the vortex. Continuous inward movement leads to front of neck access, as illustrated in the center of the vortex. Now we will demonstrate an example of a successful intubation. As before, pre-oxygenate and induce anesthesia intravenously. Optionally apply cricoid force. If performing a modified rapid sequence intubation, cricoid force may be omitted. Wait one minute for rocuronium to take effect. If using succimethonium, wait for fasciculations. Once the patient is paralyzed, perform first attempt at intubation. Here a direct laryngoscope is used, but a video laryngoscope may be electively chosen for first attempt. Open the mouth, extend the neck, insert the laryngoscope into the oral cavity with the left hand, track the tip of the laryngoscope along the base of the tongue into the molecula, sweep the tongue to the left, 
lift the laryngoscope to reveal the vocal cords and attempts to insert the endotracheal tube. In this case, secretions are obscuring the view of the vocal cords, so oropharyngeal suctioning is performed. As the patient has an anterior larynx, a bougie is used to railroad the endotracheal tube. For a very anterior larynx, the angle of the bougie can be manipulated and exaggerated to help guide the endotracheal tube forwards. As the tube is railroaded over the bougie, it is rotated clockwise or counterclockwise to allow the bevel to pass above the arytenoids. Once the tube goes through the cords, the bougie is removed and ventilation is provided through the tube. The cuff of the endotracheal tube is inflated to create a seal. Cricoid pressure is released once an adequate seal is maintained. The tube is then secured with a fastener designed for use in the intensive care unit. A mechanical ventilator can now be attached to the endotracheal tube. Once the tube is secured, it is necessary to perform follow-up care. Optionally perform suctioning down the endotracheal tube to remove secretions that may be inhibiting ventilation. Endotracheal suctioning is described in more detail in one of the videos linked below. Auscultate the patient's lungs while performing bag mask ventilation. Equal air entry should be heard on both sides and in the peripheries of the lungs. A recruitment maneuver may also be performed at this point. Order a chest x-ray and radiographically confirm correct position of the endotracheal tube. Monitor for complications of intubation, including desaturations, airway bleeding, or misplaced endotracheal tube. Establish a follow-up airway plan, including a plan for weaning and extubation, and a plan for airway management should the current airway fail. Document an airway alert, including the type of artificial airway in situ, the depth at which the tube is placed, and the difficulty of the intubation. If emergency front of neck access was performed, ensure surgical review of same and plan for conversion to tracheostomy. Repeat basic hand hygiene as demonstrated at the beginning of this video. This instructional video has been produced in association with the Irish Centre for Applied Patient Safety and Simulation. Related training videos for other intensive care procedural skills can be found below. Associated task analyses are available in the research article linked at the beginning of this video.